Welcome to another Connection here on TK08 Television. Dennis King, thanks for joining us on the Connection Show this week. Uh, each week we try to have different organizations come in and tell us what's going on uh, in those organizations and what affects our viewing area. And we do have some really good organizations and it's always, always volunteers, volunteers. They always do need help. So we do appreciate them. Stay with us, be back in a moment. We're gonna talk with a young lady from a very important organization here in the area, CASA. Stay with us. Inland Waste Solutions works diligently to be good stewards of the environment. Reducing waste via curbside recycling services, Inland Waste Solutions takes this mission seriously, but they need your help. When putting your waste and recyclables in their respective curbside containers, be sure that cross-contamination doesn't occur. Please only place recyclable materials in the yellow top bins. Check your recycling do's and don'ts list before you throw any item into the yellow top recycle bin. Together we can make a difference. Inland Waste Solutions, local people serving local people in Harrison. Summer is here and Harness Boots and Shoes has some of the hottest brands and styles available at great prices. You'll find a huge selection of sandals by Chaco for men, women, and children in various styles and colors. Birkenstock Footwear sets the standard for comfort, quality, and functionality and continues to be one of their most popular brands. New for the season is their Tony Llama Casual Shoes for men and boys and the all-new Ariat Cruiser Classic Slip-On for women. Their selection of Twisted X continues to grow with the latest and new styles. Get in the swing of summer at Harness Boots and Shoes on the Square in Harrison. Back on Connection here on TK08 Television, our first guest in the studio today is Katie Riley, and she's with CASA. Thanks for coming in. Thanks Katie. for having me, Dennis. I always uh, love being here. I hadn't, hadn't seen you in a while, so I thought we got to get you back in. That's uh, right. I know you've got an event we want to talk about yeah. coming up, but uh, just for the viewers that maybe hasn't seen your interview in the past, a lot of people hear the word CASA, but maybe they don't know what it means. What's it stand for, I guess, would be the first thing. So CASA is Court Appointed Special Advocates. Mm -hmm. um, we work exclusively with children in the foster care system. Okay. Now, your area, I guess, through the years has expanded. What, mm -hmm. How many, where do you cover? So what? we serve Baxter, Boone, Marion, and Newton counties. So Mountain Home, Jasper, Harrison, Yellville, and all the surrounding area. So is that the 14th? That's the 14th the district, judicial district. Judicial uh -huh. district, okay. And obviously you work with the judges and the, and uh -huh. the, and the so forth. Uh, now, you have an office in Harrison which is downtown, mm -hmm. I call it the old first federal building, uh -huh. most people that live here. Uh, it's over on the southwest corner uh -huh. of the square. Stevenson and Willow, uh, right there on the corner. Stevenson and Willow. And now, do you have other offices in other, we other counties? We have one, actually it's funny that you asked, we have a brand new office in Mountain Home that we're so excited about. We just opened it this month. Okay. It's right on South Main Street, just one block north of their square. Oh. So it's a, it's a great space, we're super excited um, to be right in the middle of downtown Mountain Home. Um, and hopefully do a little more recruiting over there in that area and kind of expand our reach in the Mountain Home okay. area. Now, do you have to go back and forth? I travel? do go back and forth. I try to be there at least a couple days a week, and uh, but I, we're predominantly here in Harrison. In, in Harrison. Mm -hmm. um, just maybe give us an overview, kind of what you do, how you represent these kids in, in the district. So uh, CASA is a very unique form of volunteerism. We have a very special relationship with the court. We are appointed by the judge to every child that's in foster care, or to every case. Now sometimes there's multiple siblings in a case. Right. Um, but we provide a trained volunteer who serves as an advocate for that child. Okay. So their job is to go out, um, speak to all of the members of that child's family, their teachers, um, therapists, anyone who's intimately involved with the child, and we put together a report and we present it to the court, and basically we make our recommendation as to what we feel is in the best interest of that child. So we're lucky, um, we only get to represent the child. We don't have to worry about any other factors in the case. Um, we can just go in and say exactly what we think is best for that child. It's, it's it, it, now, these, these children that, would, that you would be advocate for, uh, is there, it's, I'm sure you run into all kinds of situations. We do. The majority of the children that we serve have been removed from the home um, because of some type of abuse or neglect, and the majority of that stems from drug abuse. Mm. Um, I would say at least 85% of our cases, there's drugs involved. Yes. Unfortunately, that our court system today, and we do a court show and have been doing it for years uh, uh, on Fridays, 
uh, when they do pleasing and arraignments, but it gives an opportunity for people to see what's going on in, in, uh, in, the, in the Harrison and, well, the 14th district, actually, because mm -hmm. we have people come in there from Marion, Newton, uh, 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 Boone County, and some out of Baxter, but they have a court over there. But it, 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 nine out of 10, and usually the 10th one, is indirectly involved with drugs. Exactly. It's, it's sad. It, it's it a is. Sad it's, a, it's astounding to me yeah. that the problem is so wide, wide reaching here in this area. Yeah. Um, we live in an amazing community and the people here are so unfailingly generous. Um, and you know, I'm a native of Harrison yes. and it still shocks me to know that this is going on in yeah. our community yeah. because you know, as a child, I didn't experience it growing up. I didn't see it firsthand. So right. to be in this role now and to be to be facing you know these challenges for our community, it, it's alarming to me. It, it's just it's something that we need to address. And I'm hopeful that um, you know the directions that the community are are taking towards um, rehabilitation and bringing in new resources for people who are yeah. affected by drug abuse. They've really made a lot of steps recently to try to address it, and I'm hopeful that we'll continue in that direction. It, it is, and, and the thing about, you know, a lot of people didn't, it, I, I won't say that it, it kind of slipped up on us, for lack of a better word, but uh, uh, through the years, a lot of people didn't realize that small town America, which is what we are, uh, it, it was, was going to be and was already affected uh, by drug problems. And then all of a sudden it just kind of hit. And of course, methamphetamine took off several years ago. They've tried to, uh, contain it, if you will, with the uh, r rules and regulations of buying the ingredients, but then what happened, they start bringing it in out of Mexico mm -hmm. and other places. So, you, you know, but the, the opioid situation and uh, just drug abuse in general, you know, so many people need help. They don't necessarily need to be imprisoned, but they need help to get, uh, get off of it, get back to a normal life. Exactly. because it does it destroys families mm -hmm. and obviously you're in that and part. And that's one of the things that I think people don't realize is that we have this drug situation going on in this part of the country. They don't see the fallout from that. They mm -hmm. see the individual's lives ruined, but they don't see the families yes. and the children that are affected who are being entered into this cycle that they're going to have to work their entire lives to get out of. Yes. Um, you know, it, it's really damaging to the family unit and it's something that if not addressed, it's gonna to continue to happen gener generationally. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we've worked really hard with CASA doing right um, recently, is a lot of public awareness for the effects of drug abuse from on, on parents to their children. Yeah. Um, you know, even if the children are not affected um, from a health standpoint, just the emotionally, what happens when they have a parent who's addicted um, and that, the type of abuse and neglect that they experience because of that addiction. Um, it's, uh, I know it's in, in the, I know personally uh, individuals and, a per and one individual in particular that works in the Harrison School District and, and, and uh, the, of course we've got a major homeless situation, a lot of it goes right back to the drugs and people losing their jobs or can't maintain a job or can't maintain their habit and then they get in trouble trying to maintain the habit, whatever the situation may be, but, but then, then they deal with in the school systems. Uh, the teachers and the social workers and so forth have to deal with these younger kids mm -hmm. that are affected by this and, it, and it's a traumatic situation for them you know they just growing up is enough mm -hmm. but if you have to grow up in a situation like either homelessness or uh, drugs or abuse mm -hmm. or whatever and i'm sure you see all kinds of we do and it, it's heartbreaking and it's it's one of the things that I admire most about my volunteers is their resiliency, their ability to face this on a daily basis and, and to you know, directly interact with the children who are affected by these things. Mm -hmm. And they keep coming back to CASA. Yes. And it's because what we do is so important. And they see that what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, even though it's tough and emotionally it's draining, it's so crucial to our community. Um, you know, and I encourage people, even if cost is not for you, to get involved in, with some of these other organizations that um, address the homelessness, address hunger, yes. um, joblessness, that affect those things. Um, if you can volunteer for one of those organizations, if that's where your passion is, you're still helping CASA in yes. our cause because you're helping those children Good whose work. parents desperately need more resources. That's true. I mean, it's kind of a trickle-down effect. It really know. is. Uh, I want to get into your uh, Kids Fest coming up yeah. in just a minute, but uh, volunteers, since we're talking, I know you always need volunteers. We do. How much time, just briefly, would it take if, if somebody like myself, I've wanted to get a, to be a volunteer? It's about 15 to 20 hours a month, we say on average. Now, okay. it can vary. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Um, cases go through spells where they're more active. 
um, at times than others. But we say on average about 15 to 20 hours a month. Okay, well, which is not a lot. I it's mean, not, it's, it's, you know, it's hard. Time is a very valuable thing yes. and it's hard to find time to give to, to all the organizations that are so worthy. But I, I will say that um, CASA is extremely rewarding and for 15 to 20 hours, you're changing a life. Changing a life. True. Okay, you got an event called Kids Fest coming up. Yeah. Let's talk about it and when and what all is going to happen. So Kids Fest is near and dear to my heart. I love this event. You know, this community puts on so many events, yes. and it's not just because it's a CASA event. It's really something that I love We that the community offers. Uh, Kids Fest is a free event. That's my favorite part about it. Um, so you can bring your family out and enjoy bounce houses and food vendors and games and just all kinds of family-oriented activities. It's down on the soccer complex on September 8th. It starts at 4 p.m. So basically, um, you know, we try to offer face painting and um, pony rides and a petting zoo and just all kinds of fun activities for children of all ages, uh, adults too. And it's held in conjunction with the state hot air balloon championship. So there's the tether balloon rides that happen down there as well. Mm -hmm. They start at dark um, and then it's an overall larger event called Celebration in the Sky. Now, this is the first year we're using that term, but the events have grown uh, so large, each one individually, that we've decided to put them under one umbrella and make it a whole weekend. Okay. So there's also the aviation days that happen on Friday night and Saturday, uh, so the 7th and 8th, out at our airport. Okay. And I have to take a minute just to gush about our airport. <laughs> I am, we are so fortunate. Um, to be a community this size and have an airport that functions in the capacity that ours functions. Oh, yes. We are just so fortunate. And if you haven't been to the airport in the last couple of years, you haven't been to the airport. So I encourage everyone to come out. Um, Costa is going to do a 5K on Saturday morning. Okay. You can come out and actually run the grounds of the airport. If that's not for you, just come out and um, there's going to be aviation displays, a 9-11 tribute. Yeah. There's a concert out there. Jason Pritchett will be there uh, Friday night. There's just so much for the whole family. There's a car show. Um, there's just too many things to name. But, um, you know, come out and, and explore the airport and be a part of this this whole weekend of, of fun that we've had planned for families. Well, you do have a lot going on. It's crazy. I can't even remember. I should have written it all down because it's gotten so big. I can't remember each individual portion of it anymore. But <laughs> that's, So basically, we're going to have two different locations. Two different this, locations this year. It's going on at, this, uh, at the uh, soccer uh, complex mm -hmm. down on the creek. Uh, and then also at the uh, Boone County Airport, uh, which is new this time. They're, this is kind of a bring back. When I moved here years ago, they had the Coca-Cola Air Show uh -huh. the Ozarks, if I remember correctly. And then it, it kind of went away, but they're, they're trying to kind of resurrect that type of, a, of an event and then tied it in with your mm -hmm. with your other stuff, which is fantastic. I think that's a great idea, actually, uh, and and sounds like a lot of fun for everybody. It is. And there's it, there's something free. for it's everyone. It's a free event. And free, yes, free event. the event's uh, free. Know, that's fantastic. So, uh, okay, so it, did we cut? Co did we cover everything? It's pretty well, yeah, in both places. Uh, so, if you want to sign up for the five k, uh, everything's online. So you can okay, go to casa one four dot org. Okay. Um, there's a sign up. There's all the information for Kids Fest. You can find us on Facebook as okay. well. Um, or, you know, always give our call, our office a call at 743-2212. Easy to get a hold mm -hmm. of. Don't forget about it. This is a great event. It's coming up. It'll be fun for the entire family. And, it, and it's a great cause, CASA. Uh, they, uh, they do a, a tremendous job uh, helping these children that need help and need somebody to be there with them, stand with them, and be with them through the time, uh, trying times that they have. Uh, the event, September the 8th, be at 4 p.m. Uh, they're going to have events down at the soccer complex at the airport as well. So go out and enjoy. They have some music, food, festivities, and the 5K run if you want to run around the airport. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it, Katie. It's good to oh, see you as always, and me. stay in touch. So we got to get you Definitely back in Definitely will. Stay with us. Be back in a moment. We're going to talk with a young lady about what's going on at the Boone County Senior Center. On connection. Stop in at White Oak Station on Caps Road in Harrison and fill up with Shell Gasoline, the highest quality gasoline with more miles per gallon, saving you money. Sign up for the Fuel Rewards card and save five cents per gallon every time. Plus, get an extra five cents off on Razorback Wednesdays. That's a savings of ten cents per gallon. Check out their expanded deli and hot and cold food items. 
Caps Road, White Oak Station, where customer service is their number one goal. We all need the help of a pharmacy from time to time. Sullivan Pharmacy would like to thank all their customers for supporting them as an independent local pharmacy. When you trade with an independent pharmacy, you deal with an owner that supports the local economy and charities. Visit Sullivan Pharmacy for any of your over-the-counter or prescription needs. It's important to keep helping those that help the community. Sullivan Pharmacy, 731 Main Street, Harrison, serving this area since 1965. Back on Connection here on TKOA Television, Dennis King, thanks for joining us on the Connection Show this week. Our next guest comes to see us quite often. She's from the Boone County Senior and Wellness Center here in Harrison, Chris Kendall, the director. Chris, thanks for coming in. Oh, thank Appreciate you for having me. Appreciate it very me. much. Well, uh, always things going on at the Senior Center, but before we get into that, for those that may be watching that maybe haven't seen our interviews with you in the past, uh, just kind of an overview, kind of tell us a little bit what the Senior Center does here in Harrison. Sure, sure. Um, we serve a congregate lunch every day to anyone 60 and above. Mm -hmm. um, we suggest a $3 donation for that meal. Um, we are funded 49% through state and federal grants, and so um, you know that that helps a lot. But you know, there's still 51% that um, you know we have to ask for donations for. Um, the United Way of Boone County gives us some money each year, and the Quorum Courts gives us some money each year. Um, which we're very, very thankful for both of those entities yes. for, for giving this, you know, for sharing that, that with us. But, um, you know, we still have to raise, you know, quite a bit and, you know, we have to do quite a bit of fundraising throughout the year as well. We have a goal of over 30000 this year that we, that we have to raise right. just to cover our expenses of, yeah. of um, you know, of the services that we do provide. We have socialization activities at the senior center as well, so you can come and you can have a cup of coffee with a friend, or um, you can exercise. We have several exercise programs that are available. We have Zumba, which which is available now. That's kind of cool. new, uh, a new activity that we've added just recently. We've um, we we have a young lady who's from uh, she she's originally from. Uh, Harrison Fitness and she was doing a Zumba class there and she learned that we needed an instructor for our silver sneakers class and so she came over and she's doing our silver sneakers class and um, our Zumba classes as well so that's something new that we've added. We've moved our bunco uh, to Mondays uh, instead of Tuesday evenings and so um, we are getting more participation in that. And, um, you know, uh, Bunko, if you've never played, it's a really fun dice game. And mm -hmm. last last Monday, oh my goodness, the ladies were just out there. And I, I think there was a gentleman or two out there too. <laughs> uh, they were just laughing and, and, you know, all the way in my office I could hear Bunko. <laughs> and so it was a lot of fun for them, you know. And, and um, you know, the exercise is really important for, for anyone, but especially as you age, you, yes. you know, uh, body in motion stays in motion and a body at rest tends to stay at rest yeah. and so um, you know it's it's very important for everyone to keep moving but for our seniors especially and so um, you know we have seniors that come in every day to exercise which is great to see and then um, you know we we have the gym to where they can come in and they can right. just exercise on their own uh, we have um, uh, stationary bikes and um, treadmills and uh, and several other pieces of equipment that they can just use on their own uh, on you know on their own time and they can come in anytime between 8 and 4 30 when this the center is open um, and then we also provide transportation throughout Tra Boone, Boone yes. County um, we can come and pick anyone up that's 60 years old or, or older um, we can pick them up from their home or from wherever they are and take them to, you know, we can bring them to the senior center or we can take them to Walmart to do grocery shopping, um, you know, any other the gro of the other grocery stores that are here in Harrison, um, to hair appointments, to the library, to the bank, where, wherever in Harrison that they need to go. And there again, we never charge a fee for any of our services. This is by donation only. And if they can't afford to give a donation, then we understand, you know, maybe next time they will be able to yeah. give a donation. Yeah. Um, we also have the home delivered meal program yes. that is throughout the entire county, um, and that is uh, you know Lead Hill and Valley Springs, Alpena, 
um, out 7 South towards Jasper to mm -hmm. the Boone County line, of course. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so we, we do go in all directions. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so as long as you live in Boone County, um, you're 60 years of age and older. Um, and if you're homebound, then uh, most likely you would qualify for the Home Deliver Meal Program. Many people have called in the past and we haven't been able to serve out in the county, but now we are able to, you know, we've, we've expanded and, and we've grown a lot in the last four years. Uh, let me ask you a question. I'm not sure I've asked this of you in our past uh, interviews. Uh, like I call it the Meals on Wheels, mm -hmm. is that what it's called, uh, home delivery. Do you have to fill out a full, how do you qualify for that? I mean, is there, mm -hmm. tell us how that works. Okay. You just call the senior center and uh, tell them, you know, just say I'm interested in Meals on Wheels for myself or for a family member. Okay. Um, and then I go and I do a home visit with that person okay. to, uh, you know, just to, to gather the paperwork that's needed and, um, you know, to see if they qualify. And, and like I said, 60 years of age or older and um, unable to um, leave the home or uh, unable to shop or cook for themselves. Um, I kind of do an evaluation while I'm there. Okay. And then um, as long as the person qualifies, we can start them as soon as the next day. There, there have been times that I've started people the same day. Wow. And so, you know, it's a very quick process. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, we try to make it as quick and as simple as possible because we know that a lot of people need food you know, yeah. and, and so we try to make it as quick as we can to get it started. Is there an income, uh, uh, mm -mm. like an income level or anything? No, there is no income guidelines. Um, we do s receive a special grant funding, it's called SSBG, mm -hmm. and that is for low income families. And we can only use that grant, uh, that grant money for low income families, and so we do ask about income but it's only to see if we can use that special grant funding for that person, you know, for their services or not. Um, but we don't look Turn at anyone's income to see if they qualify or not. Well, that's great. That's a great uh, program. You know, you think about it, uh, there's, there's elderly people out there, not necessarily, uh, you know, in a situation where they're considered in poverty, but they can't get out or they don't have any relatives uh, and if they can't go to the supermarket or wherever to purchase groceries and so forth, not able to, they're maintaining at home, but they can't get out. They really just need nutrition, even though they could probably pay for it, but mm -hmm. they need it brought to them. And, and that's a, it's a good point, actually, that it there's is. not always the money situation. Mm -hmm. It's whether they can get out of the house or go on their own. Right. And, and do or, things. you know, a lot of them just can't stand long enough to cook a yes. meal. You know, they, they can throw a TV dinner in the microwave, but they can't stand and cook mm -hmm. a, an actual nutritious, healthy meal. Uh -huh. And with our meal service, you know, our, our food service manager gets there at 6 a.m. every morning, and we cook most of our food from scratch. You know, mm -hmm. our spaghetti and meatloaf, that's from scratch. We, wow. we order the hamburger and, and, you know, add all the ingredients that are needed. and. And um, you know those are from You didn't have to come in here at lunch meals. and start talking about all that. And I know. Kind of getting hungry here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of the Meals on Wheels program, I know uh, maybe you told me this last time you were here, and I and I apologize if you answered me. Uh, how did the did you ever obtain enough money to get your new vehicle for the for the home delivery? We have ordered our new vehicle. Okay. Uh, we may have been just a little bit shy of, of our goal, okay. but um, my my supervisor said that she has ordered it. And it does take six months to a year for us to, to get it. To but get that. that is going to be that that's going to be wonderful for us to have. We'll we'll be able to reach a lot more people with that as well, and and it will it'll save our expenses as well because right now we're using a twelve passenger van to deliver meals in the afternoon. Oh. I mean, and you know, using a van of that size, uh, we use it in the morning to deliver meals, you know, hot meals here in town. But then we take that van and go uh, to Lead Hill and to wow. Valley Springs wow. and Alpena, and you know, so that takes quite a bit of gas for yeah. us to do that. Yeah. But Plus, uh, I would assume, of course, you, your hot meals, you try to put them in bags, I'm sure, mm -hmm. warming bags we and do. so forth. But with this new truck, it, will it be set up? where that keeps them warm mm -hmm. and it's like a regular truck it uh, is yes type of thing. it's it's temperature controlled and so the there's a little box that sits on the back of the truck and it 
and it heats the the warm foods and keeps the cold foods mm. cold you nice. know the milk and and desserts that we deliver that's cold it keeps those cold yeah. So, yes. wow uh, uh, about uh, about roughly how many people on average do you uh, like go take home home meals too I mean just because since you're covering the whole county mm -hmm. now. our our last client count was about 190 wow. yes and that's that's our home delivered meal count yes wow. and we've reached over 100 in our transportation as well um, like I said we have really grown in the past four years since I've been here so yeah. you know uh, you think about uh, if you're watching the show the baby boomer generation if you will is getting a lot older they're in that realm of the, obviously they're in the 60, 65 plus uh, category. So you, your numbers are obviously gonna go up because the baby boomer generation was a huge generation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, post World War II. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I can see where your numbers would be high and, yeah. and continue to grow out mm -hmm. there. Uh, we've got about three minutes left. What else? Okay. Do, do um, our, the United Way, uh, yes. the business after hours will be held at the Senior Center. Um, that's the United Way of Boone County, and right. this is going to be their fundraising kickoff. It will be August 23rd at 5 p.m. Okay. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce will be there with, uh, you know, and and uh, do the the business after hours and the mm -hmm. kickoff for their mm -hmm. um, annual fundraising season. They will have um, entities from uh, the organizations that they support, and um, you know, the United Way of Boone County. They they help so many different organizations here in Boone County. This is a chance for you to come and see some of the organizations that they do, uh, that they do support, but then also to say thank you. You know, I, I'm sure that, you know, that, that they've helped so many organizations, but you know, I, I didn't realize how many organizations that they do help in Boone County until I saw a list of, yes. of the places that they do help. And so come out and say thank you to, to United Way of Boone County for all the work that they do and all the help that they give throughout our community. They help so many individuals that yeah. you know you, you may not even realize how many people that they do touch with their organization and and their volunteers you know mm. and and so it, it's wonderful that that they can do this um she uh, the tammy from united way sent me a, a little bit of information she she told me that um since january of 2000 uh, they have given a hundred and fifty seven thousand four hundred and fifty dollars just to the senior center wow. to help us support our our endeavors and so thank you so much united way for for all that you've done that's for right. us and for all the people that you've touched that's with fantastic. with this funding that's that's a good point yeah. and united way is very important and i've been involved in somewhat the parts of it and it is it, excellent organization and they try to touch as many uh, organizations locally that they can to support their causes and some get a little more and some get a little less but uh, they all need funding and United mm -hmm. Way is kind of the central thing for helping support those organizations so yes. don't forget August the 23rd about 5 p.m. go out to the Boone County Senior Center first of all you can go to the Senior Center and see what it's all about and if you've never been out there it's a great building great organization there and you can uh, say thank you to the United Way of Boone County for all the support that they do for Ferris Joy. It's always a pleasure having you come in. Don't forget, you gotta give me a call if I don't call you. Of course, And uh, you each month me. I know you have a lot of things going on, so mm -hmm. uh, we'll look forward in about 30 days to getting you back in here and talk about what's going on in the future. Uh, and we do appreciate it. Chris Kendall, the director of the Boone County Senior and Wellness Center here in Harrison. Thanks for joining us on Connection. We hope to see you again next time. Sullivan Pharmacy has been serving your prescription needs for over 40 years. Our professional staff is glad to assist you with prescriptions, over-the-counter medicines, and health care products. Stop by Sullivan Pharmacy if you have questions about Medicare Part D, and we'll be glad to help. If you're in a hurry, use our convenient drive through window so you don't have to get out of your car. Sullivan Pharmacy, 731 North Main Street in Harrison, helping you feel better since 1965. KTKO Channel 8 Harrison, local television worth watching.